We recently covered the perplexing, yet little shared ancient artifact which can be found at the ancient site of Patara. We cover the fact that some of the inventions accredited to the Romans within the modern day may have been borrowed concepts with origins located far within our distant past. As with the supposed ancient Egyptian sites on the Giza Plateau, many ancient ruins contain megalithic blocks whose movement into position not only evades modern explanation, but lacks any detailed recording of the mammoth task by any of these so-called culprits for constructions. Rather, it seems a worldwide conspiracy has occurred. It is well known that history is written by the victor. Maybe this is a fitting explanation for the academic ignorance witnessed on a daily basis. Perhaps it's laziness on the part of academics, put with the task of explaining these sites. Or perhaps as we have detailed on many, many occasions, a covert effort to occult the truth from modern society. Our claim is not made lightly, but upon the witnessing of talented individuals having their careers and future opportunities crushed at the hands of those who fund and therefore steer academic study in the directions of their pleasure. The stolen artifacts which tell of this story, the vast documented efforts of the many organizations around the world, tasked or rather funded to gather, pillage or steal all such items, merely to paint a picture they are told to. But the truth remains, human history is far more interesting than you have been led to believe. But be warned, paradigm destruction can often be distressing. In the popularly regurgitated marketed phrase, Roman columns, after being presented with the following evidence, may begin to feel more like programming than historically truth. The Baalbek Trilithon, a group of three horizontally lying stones which form part of the podium of the Roman Jupiter Temple of Baalbek, Lebanon. Numerous archaeological expeditions have gone to the site, starting in the 19th century, primarily German and French groups and research continued into the 20th century. Each of these stones is 70 feet long, 14 feet high, and 10 feet thick, weighing around 800 tons each. And conveniently, each of these modern academic studies concluded the same thing, completely absent of any explanation as to their placement. The entire foundation of this ancient structure is unexplainable, with a number of stones weighing over 350 tons, thus indicative of lost knowledge not modern architecture. It should seem obvious that to declare otherwise would be foolish, yet this is what's witnessed all over the earth every day. And we are yet to mention the world-famous, yet equally perplexing Stone of the Pregnant Woman, also at Baalbek, and weighing in at an astonishing 1,000 tons. As Yuri Muzik put it, quote, in 27 BC, the Roman Emperor Augustus supposedly took the unfathomable decision to build in the middle of nowhere the grandest and mightiest temple of antiquity, having no obvious reasons for selecting Baalbek as the temple's building site. The much greater erosion of the big Baalbek blocks qualifies as material proof of their much greater age." End quote. It seems that as we suspected, the evidence is mounting to support the far more logical claim that an advanced lost civilization's heritage has been stolen by different, more modern civilization all over the world. A great civilization did once flourish here on Earth, one which has been actively suppressed, stolen from, exploited, and hidden for far too long. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns, often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past, many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology. And our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics, one of which is the ancient chariot, clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses. Clearly indicative of a highly capable group, this incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts.
most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines, something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site, or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate – that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others – Pumapunku, Giza, Petra, etc. – sites created with such accuracy? that to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined, cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly ones of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder, and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better-known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony, becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs. However, as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites. The little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques, which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Pumapunka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden, their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization, rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Tamud. 
Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible, the tribe of Talmud, said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah. However, the Talmud were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent prophet Saleh to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? Remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools? Or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people? whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it here upon our planet. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. We have, in the past, explored the incredible discovery of the mythological animal sculptures of Persepolis, now known as the Lamassu. We detailed the difficulty involved in transporting just a single example of one to London a mere century ago. Yet, it would seem a similar situation seemingly also occurred at the ancient site of Amethyst, one in which the French quietly endured and restrictively documented. Located east of Ajo Tychonus, next to Limassol in southern Cyprus, strategically commanding a stunning view of the surrounding Mediterranean landscape, the main acropolis of Amethyst, sitting just out of reach of the tourist track, atop the hill above. This location served also as an additional natural fortification for the site and its ancient observatory. Impressive discoveries have been made at the ruin, including ancient basins, vases, and various other utensils used by past inhabitants of varying eras. Atop the hill were two giant vases decorating the entrance to the main temple, one once dedicated to the god of love Aphrodite, each of which being 1.85 meters tall and weighing an immense 14 tons each. One of which being stolen by the French, specifically architect Edmond de Thoit, during the Ottoman occupation of Cyprus, supposedly given permission to take it away to his country. It now rests in the Louvre Museum in Paris. His documentation of this ordeal, we feel, is a revealing insight into the clear prohibition from exposing the astonishing capabilities of ancient civilizational capability. He reservedly wrote of the ordeal of getting it back to Paris in his diary. Quote, Our last day was dedicated to Amethyst, the only sanctuary of Aphrodite that we visited. There we found two huge stone vases 3.4 meters in diameter. I could not figure out the amount that was buried in the ground, and only a measure of the artifact which was sticking out. I thought if I managed to get it out of there and to convey it into the sea, it will be my biggest achievement. I will begin to study the ways and mechanisms needed to achieve this and to have it transferred. This will create a big impression in the Louvre." End quote. Who made these vases, or indeed the Acropolis itself? They were clearly astonishing vases, having existed to this day and beyond, and along with their sheer weight, we undoubtedly find them highly compelling.